those winds of faith. I bless you this evening. Welcome back to the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. We're just going to sing a couple of songs. Sister Sharon Gindo has a special for us. We'll have Brother Murphy come out and deliver what the Lord has put upon his heart. Wonderful Easter day. Amen. Did you enjoy your afternoon? Fellowship one with another. Amen. There are two roads.
Brother Daniel Kayungi, would you come and open the service in a word of prayer? I want to remember a request the Hoffman family has put in for a family remem- member, Dave uh, Teller, I believe. He's been taken to the hospital due to a blood clot in his leg. Please pray not only for his physical healing, but also for salvation. Amen. As we pray together, if you have a need upon your heart, you'd just like to make known by the uplifted hand. Brother Daniel, God bless you. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before your presence, Lord. Oh God, as we express it in a song, we just want to set our wings free, Lord Jesus, and fly in that dimension of faith. Lord, where everything is possible, where, Lord, there is no problem, oh God, I can hinder you to move. Lord Jesus, our mind is caught up in your presence, Father. Lord, we are so blessed this morning by your word, Lord Jesus, and we believe that you also have something in store for us tonight. So we just want to set our wings, oh God, in that realm of faith, Lord Jesus, where you will anoint your servant in a special way, oh God. It's not going to be just Brother Murphy speaking, but the angel of the Lord himself will come on the scene, Lord Jesus, to discern our minds, oh God, and to touch our lives, Lord Jesus, in a special way. Lord, we just want to set ourselves free tonight, Heavenly Father. Would you have your way, oh God, even for the prayer request, Lord Jesus, that the Hoffman family brought, oh God, before your presence, Lord. We believe in your healing power. And, oh God, we pray that you will come, Lord Jesus. You will touch the hands of this person, oh God. Lord Jesus, even in a spiritual need, Lord Jesus, we pray that the Spirit of God will come, Lord. Heavenly Father, there is no distance in you, oh God. So, Lord, we raise our faith, oh God, for this prayer request. Every person, oh God, in his place, Lord Jesus, we have our hands lifted up. We are need you of you, oh God. There are problems, there are questions, oh God, in our hearts. We pray that this service, oh God, we be the answer, Lord Jesus, for any single person, oh Father. We so need you, Lord Jesus, tonight. Would you just have your way, oh God, in everything that will be said and done, through the songs, oh God, in everything, let your name be lifted up, Father, tonight. We commit our lives in your hands, Lord Jesus. Have the service once again, we pray. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Daniel, God bless you this evening as you have your seats. Sister Sharon, if you're ready, you want to come and sing a special for us tonight. We want to certainly greet each and every one that's here this evening, those that might be visiting. We want to remember those that are away. Spring break is almost coming to an end. And Brother Ed was preaching on gifted ones this morning and I gifted children. And I couldn't help but think of Sister Ella Joy. So we want to remember her in our prayers. Very diligently remember to pray for her and hold her up before the Lord. She's uh, just come through her surgery just in the last couple of days and a lot of discomfort and uh, a lot of pain. It's not easy what she's gone through or coming through, but she's going through it. Amen. So we want to remember to continue to pray for her and hold her up before the Lord as a congregation. God bless you, Sister Sharon.
Sharon, we appreciate that. We're going to invite Brother Murphy to come this evening, just as he does, sing Greater Than All My Sin. Greater Than All My Sin. We have a note here from uh, Brother Ray and Sister Zoe. They have family friends, service Isaac and Pat with their children, Tyrone and uh, Raphael. Where are you at this evening? Wave real high. Okay, right up here. God bless you. Amen. Why don't we give them a nice warm welcome tonight. Happy to have you here.
Brother Jonathan, Sister Blanca, God bless you. Nice to have you here this evening. Amen. Wonderful atmosphere. We come to expect it. You know, when you go to your favorite restaurant, you don't go there because you don't get what you expect. You go back there because you expect to get whatever that special meal was. Not that that's the way church is, but you come with an expectation. In that same atmosphere, God is faithful. He comes every time we invite him to come. So as Brother Murphy comes, let's sing this together. of God again. Well, I hope you have uh, full expectation, and uh, we believe the Lord. Uh, every service is a special service for us, not because the man, but because the God Himself is here. And uh, if you don't mind, can you just uh, help me to put on the slides? I'll just uh, give you a little updates on uh, what is the Lord doing over there. Uh, to me, it was just uh, uh, a miracle how the Lord has been uh, doing. Uh, you know, we, uh, uh, we always have the heart to reach out to the lost soul. And whenever we start losing that, there's something wrong with us. As a Christian, our whole purpose on this earth, so we're still on this earth, is only for one thing. Lord, there still have some seed that need to be saved. And it's your testimony, it's your life that can touch to them. And um, there's uh, this uh, two uh, couple with uh, white robes on. And how they uh, came to the Lord is... Um, uh, you probably remember that I shared with you the, the brother who got a white jacket. Oh, yeah. uh, we, I think we can always remember the white jacket from now on. And he was uh, just using his money and, uh, you know, started a little business and uh, frying the, uh, the dough twist out on the street. Uh, it was a typical Chinese uh, snack. So he just made some money and started out um, uh, going to different places to uh, share the gospel and uh, witnessing to the people. And the most of the time he spent online just witnessing uh, into the different uh, the group and uh, post uh, the message on, uh, post the message uh, day and night. Um, a lot of people rejected. Many people kicked him out of the room. I mean, uh, the chat room that uh, he was in. Uh, but there are still some seed there. So don't be discouraged. And when you are be rejected, uh, there still have some seed there that want to receive the word of God. So he started sharing with that. And uh, if you still remember that... Uh, uh, just a few months ago, he went to, up to the north and east uh, part of China, the close to Siberia. And that's uh, a very cold weather place. I think it's when he was there, it's about a 20 or 30 minus uh, 
Uh, it was uh, cold, miserable. Then uh, uh, he shared the word with the people, and uh, then Brother David came afterward. Uh, there was about 14 people uh, was uh, baptized in that little place. And uh, when the sisters uh, and the brothers are in that uh, little church, uh, when they caught the vision, and then they start to uh, share the message uh, with their friends, just one after another, one after another. So this is one of the fruits. And so the one of the sister gets a message book to uh, one of the province. It's called the Inner Mongolia. It's not in the Mongolia country, but it's in one of the province uh, in the northern part of China. And uh, so the Lord has been gracious. So there's the two people through this witnessing, and uh, they uh, got baptized. So just see how the Lord has been working. He can use the, any man if they want to deal with himself as the vessel in God's hand. And though he's not a minister, though the sister is not a minister, but they just have the heart to want to do things for the Lord, and the Lord can use that and um, and Brynn, this is a, a man, and this is a, I believe that's his, his wife uh, coming to the Lord. If you can play the little clip. Uh, that's in uh, Tiffany's uh, hometown. Uh, that's our brother David, uh, who baptized uh, this uh, brother. And um, this one, that I said, is a miracle. Um, you know, we, uh, we have the Bible. We've been printed. We publish it and uh, uh, send it out to, to the uh, people. And uh, in the beginning, I think I shared with you, you know, how we're going to um, bring the people uh, in the, uh, to, uh, uh, to believe the message. So, uh, but, uh, you know, by God's grace, if we commit it to the hands of the Lord, and it's the Lord's his responsibility to bring his word to his people. So this person, uh, just uh, at the end of the last year, and uh, he purchased uh, a Bible online. And after he get this Bible, and he starts reading it, and uh, he finds there's a website, because we put a website uh, on, the, on that uh, Bible there. So he threw the website, and he uh, got a hold of uh, our uh, website, which is a message website. And then he started to, uh, reading the message. And then he uh, started to contact uh, Brother Caleb that in China. And uh, so he was uh, talking with Brother Caleb uh, about uh, the Bible and the things. And then later Brother Caleb said, he said, oh, you know, I just introduced you to Brother Murphy. Let him talk to you. So he, start, he got my uh, uh, text um, uh, email. Then he started to uh, contact me. And uh, during the email contact, he, he was a very um, uh, direct person. Then he said, uh, I, I received the Bible. He said, I really like it. And I said, oh, I'm glad uh, you like the Bible. And he said, uh, what is the relationship between you and uh, Brandon? I was thinking, where did you got that from? And uh, I, I kind of uh, hesitated. I don't know how to answer him. And he said, you know, I, I saw the website. Uh, it seems like you're affiliated uh, uh, with the, um, Brandon. I said, yes, you know, I kind of tried to be a diplomatic a little bit. I said, um, you know, we don't belong to any denomination that he's the man of God, has, that God has called. He said, I, I believe he's a man of God. And he said, he, he preaches some uh, doctrines that's very different from what I believe. I said, really? I said, what it is? And he said, for example, like the Godhead. For example, like the serpent seed. I said, man, this is the hard case. So then we start to um, uh, fellowship on that. And, uh, uh, you know, then the one I was thinking, you know, Lord, I'll just give whatever you give it to me. I just poured it in. So I started to quote the Bible and then the message and started sharing with him. And afterward, he said, you know, I really appreciate what you shared. I said, that's absolutely, actually, absolutely the truth. So, uh, yeah, so I uh, contacted uh, uh, Brother Caleb again. And then he uh, went to uh, uh, call their Brother Caleb. And so the Lord's uh, just gracious. Then... Uh, in the, uh, just a few days ago, he was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, sometimes we don't know how the Lord can uh, do the things. We have a lot of thoughts in our own self. But if we just give ourselves to the Lord, he taken care of the rest of them. And this is the first one that because of the Bible, and now he received the message. Amen. 
the name of the Lord to be praised. And if you don't mind, let's stand the where I go through the word. You know, sometimes the things uh, the Lord are doing things are just in a simple way. And uh, he doesn't need a really complicated people. He doesn't need a dedicated people. If we can give ourselves to the Lord, and God is a miracle working God. And he always is doing things in the simplicity and far beyond our imagination. You know, when, I first, when we first um, uh, translated the, the Bible, we're thinking, we're just thinking about it, provided a word to the people. But before we know it, the Lord will take it elevated to another level. He uses the Bible to bring the, the people into this message. How wonderful our God is. Amen. Amen. Let's uh, turn to the uh, bo- uh, uh, book of 1 John, chapter 3. Book of First uh, John, chapter three. Let's read from a verse one and a verse two. Before we read, I wonder if we can just bow our heads. If you have any need, and by the lifting up your hand, you can let the Lord know. The man can do nothing, but our Lord is the miracle worker. He can do things that's impossible. Oh dear Heavenly Father, Lord, how we thank you, Lord. We thank you because you are the same. The yesterday, today, and forever. What you do in the yesterday, you're still doing today. Lord, are you still a miracle working God? Lord, are you still can taking a person, one, the man and the woman and the daughter and the son that are in your hands and use them to bring this message to the far end. Some, some places probably we never thought there would be the people can receive. But Lord, you still have a children there. Lord, we yield ourselves as a vessel. We give ourselves dedicated. Lord, cleanse us all these vessels that in this church. Lord, that every person, that individual, they haven't been giving themselves to the work of the Lord. Lord, that they give their time, they give their energy, they give their prayer, they give their money, everything. Lord, are dedicated for the service of God. Lord, when you look up down there, I just pray, Lord, you double, give a double portion and give a double reward to these children that you called so precious to your bosom, Lord. So, Father, we just ask you, Lord, to continually tonight that it reveal your word to us. How I'm thankful to hear the word of this morning. Or sometime we know we're coming to a point and we don't know which way to turn. That sometime we come to a point that it seems like we're getting confused and have no direction. But Lord, as a pastor has said, you always come on time, Lord. Lord, we have questions. But Lord, you're the one that dissolves all the questions on your time. So Father, we just ask you to meet the need of the people again this evening. Speak to your children through your word. Lord, we give ourselves to you for service. Ask the Holy Spirit at this moment to take the word and open it up and reveal to the individual's heart. One word to speak from you will change our whole life. We do need a transforming power. And Lord, we believe we do have the transforming power. But hearing the word of God, that transforming power has been transforming us day and night, day, year after year. Lord, we come to a point, come to the closing of the, all the times, come to the closing of the body change. Lord, we just want to tighten our belt again. Put our shoulder together again to run this last race. We thank you, Lord. I ask you to bless the service and to reveal yourself to us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Let's turn to a book of Romans, chapter 8. Verse 12. Book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 12. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors 
not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of a bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and John heir with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. May the Lord bless his word. You may be seated. Just in the beginning of the service, I would like to uh, give you a quote. So, Brother Branham said, In the Christ is the mystery of a God revealed. He said, um, Now, God is a secret uh, mystery. He had before the world began, began. Now, back in the back part of God's mind, there was a something that He was a trying and was going to achieve. And He had a motive in doing it in order to let him be expressed. Um, from this, uh, I don't know, you, I was thinking the problem, most of the people has read that the message of Christ is a mystery of God revealed. To me, it was uh, almost like a fundamental uh, for the message to reveal that the Christ, I think that that's the ministry of our prophet, what he had. It's the revealing the Christ. You know, the denomination of the churches, they can talk about the Christ. They can say how Christ did this, and they can say how Christ did that. But nobody, no church, no denomination, no minister whatsoever can have a manifest the Christ and reveal him in this hour like the ministry that what we have. And it's not only proof that the Christ it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It also to let us know that Christ that we believe that in the history, he's still alive today. That he still save people. He still can deliver people. He still can heal people. Isn't that right, Sister Francie? And when the crisis is coming out upon the sin, and you can see that all the problem will be dissolved. When the crisis starts to the speaking, start to reveal that it before us, then you saw that the family start to coming together. All we want to see, we want to see Christ be revealed. We don't want to see Christ just be preached. We don't want to see Christ just be teached. We want to see Christ be revealed before it is. Because when Christ be revealed before it is, it's not just in the word only. It's just not uh, uh, in the letter and the, the ink uh, uh, in the pages. But it's to jump out of from the pages as the pastor was preaching this morning. That's what I wanted as a Christ to be. When I read the message, when I'm listening to the message, I want him to jump out of from the pages. I want him to re- reveal himself individually to myself. I don't want to hear other people's testimony, which I'll be very much encouraged, but I want that testimony to be mine. I want that Christ to be the reality to myself. I want that Christ to be reality to my children and to my, or to my wife. Isn't that the desire of every one of us? We hear a lot of uh, Christ did this for this person. Christ did that for that person. But what I want to know, Lord, what about my family? Lord, what about my own self? I want that Christ to be revealed to me. And that is the purpose that Christ come. He gave us a ministry of this hour. It's not give us a psychology. It's not giving us a certain preaching. Afterward, we go home. We said, oh, that is a wonderful service this morning. Oh, that's a wonderful service tonight. Then go back. You live your life. It seems like the gospel doesn't take any effect to our life. That is not the gospel, I believe. Amen. That is not the gospel that God sent to this hour. When he sent the message to this hour, it's not for our mind to figure that out. But it's for faith to receive it. And not only just receive it. And we saw the message started working in our life. And it changes our life. And it receives our children. And it put them on fire. They become a fervent to God. That's why God has to express himself. Because when he expressed himself, he revealed himself in the way that we can see him. Then not with our eyes, but by faith. And we saw him. And that done something that is in our heart. That one is can transforming our life. You'll find out some similarity. Uh, the services tonight uh, with uh, this morning. 
So God, his son, what he wants to do, he wants to express himself. This brother Bram said in the crisis, uh, mystery of God revealed. And this, uh, and the Jesus Christ is the only way that he can express himself. And that's why what we received, we're not received just a merely intellectual speech. We received the person of Jesus Christ. And it come in the word, uh, in the form of a word. And when we receive it, and then when it become a reality to us, and then we believe him, then he starts to working in the individual's life. And God wants to express himself. But when God wants to express himself, he's not a try to just express himself like what we call to show off. God is not a try to show off to us how great he is. He doesn't have to prove to that. I'll give you a little quote later on. When God has a, he's, uh, revealed himself, he has uh, many attributes that he needs to reveal himself. But to the certain attributes that he can only reveal or express himself to the bride of Jesus Christ or to the believers. So when God revealed himself or expressed himself, it's not trying to satisfy his, uh, um, oh, what is that word? Ego. E- ego. Uh, okay. <laughs> you understand me. So he's not trying to show him off. Try to say, you know, how great I am. You know, I'm a big God. There's no God like me. You know, uh, almost like, a, you know, I'm a big shot. You know, why don't you believe me? That's not the way of God doing things. He expressed himself in a certain attribute to us. In order for us to understand, to recognize us. Because if we are attributes of God, only when God reveals his attribute, expresses his attribute, then the attributes of God can recognize that. So when God is doing that, he's not just trying to show how big he is, how great he is. He wants to express himself in order for his wife to receive him. In order for the believer to receive him. That's why he expressed himself. And the brother said, and in him was love. In him was to be father. In him was to be a son. In him was to be a savior. In him was to be a healer. Why he doesn't reveal himself as a creator of universe? Why he doesn't express himself as a, a almighty God that holy angels lift up their hands, said holy, holy, holy unto the Lord. If he wants to express himself that way, he already done that. He already expressed himself to be God when the worship, when the angels has been created. And then they worship him day and night, said holy, holy unto the Lord. He finished that part of expressing himself. That part of attribute he already expressed. And he fulfilled that way. He created the universe. He created heaven and earth. He created an angel. And all the angels come before him and worship him, worship him. It's not a worship him and angels are pretending to worship him. It's when he created the answer, his attribute expressed, and the, the, the angels, they are worshiping in awe. Because he wants to express himself in that way to those angels. So when he expressed himself in that way to the angel, and he created an angel in that way, so the angels can worship him like that. But he didn't create you like that. He never created you as an angel. He never created you as the holy, perfect angel. He never created you as a seraphim, a cherubim, and the never no sin. He created you that you can subject to be deceived. Subject to deception. Even Adam cannot express the attributes of a God in his sinless condition. It has to be Eve 
that have come from Adam, they can, uh, they can reveal or express the attributes of a God so that he can be a healer, so that he can be a savior, so he can be a husband, so he can be all the other attributes that need to be revealed, need to be expressed. That's the purpose he created you here. He never intended us to be a holy angel. Then you come to the church, worship him, said, holy, holy, holy unto the Lord. If he intended it to be that way, that type of a worship will be a pleased. But he never created it that way. He created a, he didn't create a, he created a weaker vessel. He created that your body can give you a lot of trouble. He created you that you have a passion that a lot of the time causes you a big problem. He created you that you can stumble. Why? It's not to find an excuse for your sin, but it's to express his attributes. He created you that you can be deceived. He created you that some people you find out, I find out that many times, it's those people they're considered spiritual. It's those people they're considered as a strong vessel. It's those people they're considered the hallelujah, the amen. They come to the church. They really, uh, they, they really um, mean good. They are really sincere. You find out that many of those people they're subject to mistake, and sometimes they, they, they go astray, and sometimes they stumble. They make a mistake. Sometimes they get into the problem. I feel I'm talking to angels almost like. <laughs> Maybe God did create you different from me. <laughs> it's those sincere people. This, they tend to, not to all of them, but many of them, I saw them, it's the sincere people. They follow the wrong doctrine. Because they want to get in closer to God. And when some wrong doctrine coming up, because of the, instead of, a, they just use their personal personalities and different convincing power, it's those people, they've been led astray. It's those people, they start to follow. It's not because they mean bad. It's because they want to follow the Lord. They want to be spiritual. They want to know the Lord. They want to love the Lord. They want to understand the revelation. But the devil take it a chance and put them into a stray so that they become a go, they be, they be led astray. They be led off of the, the right path. Yeah. It doesn't mean that they're lost. They're sincere people. They want to do the good things. But you find out we're all human beings. When God created us, He created us. As a human being. As I said, it's not a try to find excuse for everyone. But it's to let you understand who you really are. And to let you understand when God creates you that way. That is a purpose when God creates you that way. Because there is a certain attribute that in God has to be manifested. And there's a no other way for God's attribute to be manifested until that you've been created in the way that God intended it to be created. That's why he created Eve. Eve is not a, the original creation, but it was a created from the Adam's uh, side. And when Eve was uh, printed out, and we find out it's uh, not, uh, it's not uh, Adam was deceived, but it was uh, Eve was deceived. That's the first Timothy 2, 13. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. But without his deceived, without she was deceived, without the way that Eve was doing, the attributes of Adam cannot be expressed. Because Adam... Because uh, Eve, when she was deceived, is Adam took her back to him. That saved uh, Eve's, Eve's life. So the Lord cannot destroy her. You see, when we were created on this earth, 
Though we're subject to weakness, though we're subject to many things that are influence of this world. And some people they're fighting with their with their emotional realm. Some people they're battling in their mind. Some people they're in the confusion. Some people, every person, we all have the things that, that we have to dealt with. That the things in our life, we probably get confused. What shall we do? If the message has the power like this, why it doesn't happen to me? If the message has the power in it, why the things that I have, I don't have an answer? Why the questions or the problem that I'm going through? Why there's no time, there's nothing can be solved? Why did I come to the situation like this? I think that many of us, we're going through like that. But let me, re- let me assure you again, God created you, led you to be like that. We're talking about the last time. He said, uh, the Lord said, I have said, ye are God. But God is in a flesh. When, we, when God created, when we're on this earth, when we're born on this earth, we're not born as a holy angel. We're born as a human being. But there's the one thing in you that is the greater than the one that is in the outside world. Amen. That is the God, his attributes that is in you. Amen. But Abraham said in the adoption, he said inside of that was attributes. He said inside of this great El- El- Elohim was an attribute. He said, you know what an attribute is? Or let me say it like this. It's a, it was a nature. So I understand that attribute is a nature. When we said God has an attribute, what is the attribute? Of, that means the God's nature. If you are the attributes of God, which the message has told us, we're the thoughts of God. We're the attributes of God. That who you are. You are God's nature. When you said you are, I'm the attributes of God, I'm the gene of God, you possess the God's nature. So when God's nature was expressed, he expressed it from a thought, then to a word. And then when you receive the word, you literally receive what? You receive God's nature that is the dwelling in you. And the brother said that God is his only interpreter. He said, and now all we are today is the display of his attribute. That is the reason that we live on this earth. We live on this earth. The purpose is to put God's attributes on display. He said, what I mean, attributes was his thoughts. He said that a world, he said that a word is a thought expressed. And then that was in his thinking. He said, and when he said, let there be, and there was. Let there be, and there was. He said, now remember, you Christians were his thoughts before there was a world. And you are the manifestation of his thinking. Before there even was a word, you were in Christ. Amen. In God, in the beginning. He said, that makes you. He said, you see his subjects. And the whole thing is God himself materializing himself tangible so he could be handled sin and so forth and that's what God is that is the whole thing God has an attribute and if we are his attributes and our purpose on this earth is to reflect his attributes on this earth to put his God's attributes on display and then he said in identification he said, our character molds us to the image of what we are. Our character of a life that's in us. He said, now you take a little germ of life. And when if a germ of the bird, it will produce a bird. And if a germ of a wheat, it will produce wheat. A germ of a corn, it will produce corn. See, the life that's in it molds the character of it. If we said we are the attributes of a God, and then... Your character will show that you are the attributes of a God. Because you cannot beat the gin. You cannot beat the germ. The corn will produce corn. A bird will produce a bird. A pig will produce a pig. Uh, if you are the son and daughter of a God, that will produce a son and daughter of God. There's just no other way around it. 
No matter how flesh that in this flesh maybe give you trouble, no matter how what it questions, no matter how devil try to say to you, but inside of you there is an attribute that gene cannot be disputed. Sooner or later, it will manifest itself. It's not you try to manifest itself. It's a him that will manifest it in you. No matter how dark it is, how much a question that we have a question with, no matter how things that we don't understand, no matter how many confusion that we're going into, no matter how dark it is, it seems like, but that attribute will never lie to you. It's that attribute will mold your character. It's not just a trial. It's not just the difficulty. It's not just what thing we're going through. If all the difficulty, all the trials, without that attributes in you, everything is just a waste. You're still a kingdom father. But because the attributes are in you, then the trial means something. Then all the difficulties mean something. All the darkness, all the confusion start to become a treasure. Why? It's all because the attributes that is in you. Without that, all the things you're going through, just as the same as all the kingdom father going through, there is no difference. What makes you different is not how much you're going through a trial. What makes you different is that how much, is not how much you're going through the difficulty. Then you come out strong. That doesn't mean anything. Making a difference is the attributes that the Lord has before the foundation of the world, and now they're living in you. And they call you the children of God. When God come, he's tried to find his attribute. He's not trying to find an angel. He's not trying to find somebody that can go through a trial and come out strong. He's not trying to find a strong person. He's not trying to find some holy person. He come in here to find his own attribute. That's what, what is the redemption for. He's come to redeem that which was lost. In another word, he come to the redeem or making it to manifest which is, hasn't been manifested yet. Abraham said in the identification. He said now to make a character that could redeem this woman. It had to be something greater than her. To redeem her. We said the one that is in us is greater than the one that is in the world. But when Christ come, he come to redeem which was lost. How to redeem? He said it had to be something greater than her. To redeem her. It's not only just the one that is in us is the greater than the world. The one that's in you is actually greater than you. The one that's in you is greater than the one that is here. Is this one give me the most of trouble? It's not that the person beside you. It's not that the other things. Is this one give me the give me the most of trouble? Is this one condemn myself the most? Is this one to make me feel guilty the most? Is this one, to, is your one, your flesh to make you condemn you the most? But he come to, he said he must, uh, he said uh, it had to be something greater than her. What he give it to you is greater than what is on this here, on this outside. Is it greater than your confusion? Is it greater than your pride? He's greater than your temper. He's greater than your lust. He's greater than everything that what is the problem that this body has given to me. He come to bring it back. But Abraham said, if you are in the Lamb's book of life, he said, you was God's expression from his thoughts. He's seen you and seen your desire. Before there even was an Adam, or anything else, and you are his thoughts made word and expressed in what you are now. Amen. That's God in you reflecting Christ today. 
He's seen you and seen your desire. What is it coming for? It's coming for his own attributes. He didn't see your flesh. He didn't see that outward. He passed the flesh and see what is the inside of it. And that is the attributes that God had. What is the attribute? The nature of God. If you possess the nature, you can only desiring the God, godly things. I'm not talking about the mental battle that you're going through every day. I'm talking about the inside of the inside, that desire for God himself. Because that attribute is God's nature. Here is not God's nature. Here is the battleground. But what is the nature that's inside of you? Amen. That is the attributes of God. He didn't, put a, uh, he didn't put a devil's nature in you. He didn't put ungodly nature in you. He didn't put a flesh nature in you. He put a God himself's nature that is inside of you. Amen. That's why you're craving for God. That's why you're craving for holiness. That's why you're craving for rapture. You're craving for the body change. That's why when you sold this body, it gave you so much trouble. Tears coming down. Lord, I want to overcome this. That is the nature of God. That is the desire that God has put it in you. That is your attribute. That proves that you come from the thoughts of God. If you don't come from there, how can you desire that? If you don't come from God, how can you desire God? If you didn't come from the thoughts, how can you thinking the God thought? How can you reading the word, you listening to it, you said, Lord, transform me. Let me be like you. Where is that coming from? That is the nature of God. But there is a balance here. You cannot just tell me, I'm desiring for God, I'm desiring for God. Then you live what kind of a life that you can uh, just live a, whatever the life that you want to live. If you have the attributes of a God, where's the power of that attribute? If you have the desire for God, why your desire is not met? If you do have unquenchable desire for God, how can God not fill that desire with reality? If you do have the desire of a God, how can he not make that desire become materialized? It's impossible. When you have that desire, you will say, I must get to Jesus. When you have a desire, when you saw your life and not in your all to be, you said, I must, have, I must have that Jesus. I must let that Christ live in me. That's why you're reading the message book. It's not as a background of music. That's why you're reading. That's why you're listening. You're grabbing every word. You come in in the morning. You come in at night. When the pastor was preaching, you're grabbing every word. Maybe the first word, it doesn't mean anything. Maybe the second word, maybe the third. But a sooner or later, you will find out there's some word that God is preaching directly to your heart. I was listening. I was praying this morning. I was looking forward for that word. Lord, my heart needs that. Lord, this heart cannot be, cannot be satisfied by man's word. But this heart can only be satisfied by God's presence coming down to reveal himself to me. And you know, when you have that desire, God met your desire. And he met my desire. When our pastor was speaking this morning, that was just said to the last of a few moments. I was a yearning. I was a lonely. I said, Lord, I have a question in my mind. And then just all of a sudden, he said, on God's time, that God will answer that question. Amen. And to me, all the burden left in me. Amen. I know, God, your time is not my time. Amen. But you are obligated to answer all my questions. Amen. Oh, how wonderful our God is. Amen. It's not just something talking about. But it's a reality. You know why? It's not because of the question. It's not because of the trial. It's not because of the difficulties. Because I'm the attributes of Him. 
And you are the attributes of him. When you have the question, when you have the problem, when you have the confusion, he's coming down to meet every your need. Through the word. Because the word is the thoughts expressed. God only coming down to bring back, to redeem, or to reveal, or to express, to express his own attribute. We saw ourselves as a man. But when God looking at us, as the prophet said, he's seen you, he's seen your desire, because that's his attribute. If you are the attributes of a God, that means you are the son and daughter of a God. If you're a son and daughter of a God, and then I have said, you are God's. God cannot give a birth to a dog. God cannot give a birth to a cannon fodder. God cannot give a birth just to a Baptist and preaching something, uh, some denominational idea. God give birth to God. So when God saw that, he saw God. He didn't see a man. He didn't see a woman. You see men. You see women. You see flesh. But when God look, he only look at one thing, my attributes. This one is my attribute. That one is my attribute. That is my gene. That is my germ. This one is my son. That one is my daughter. That's what God saw. When God saw, God saw God. He could not see anything else. When God saw God, by what? Because we were in his thoughts. And then that thought was expressed. He expressed the better ministry, better prophet's ministry in this hour, better message of this hour. That is the God's eye. That's why he sent his eagle down. For what? To give us a different eyesight so that we don't see each other just as a man. We saw as God saw. God saw God. That if we tear it as a flesh down, but just use the words the word has said, then the word can only saw there's a God that is in that person. Brother Abraham said in the token, he said it's Zoe, which means God's own life. That's right. The only way that you ever can have a life, there's only one form of eternal life, and that's a God's own life in you. Then you have eternal life because He is the only eternal there is. And we are the attributes of His thoughts before there was even a foundation of the world or anything. All this is just His thinking, and we are the display of His thoughts of what it is. How do we know if we have the eternal life? It's to say if God's life has lived in us or not. If God's life is living in us, we'll be only desiring what is the God is desiring. I'm talking about your soul, your heart now. Not to the battle for, battleground that you are, are fighting every day. And the Christ is an example that only desire what is a God desire. And if we desire for God, how can He not, not fail us? In the book, uh, in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, He said, If a son shall ask a bread of any of you that is a father, would he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, would he for a a fish give him a serpent. He said, or if he shall ask an egg, would he offer him a scorpion? If ye then, being evil, know how to give a good gift unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? The Holy Spirit is the God's own life. If you're desiring for it, God will fulfill that desire. But it has to be a true desire. It cannot be just a randomly, 
you know, if I get it, I get it. If you don't I get it, forget about it. That is not a desire. That's just in that emotional realm. That's just something that's in, 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 the, in the mind affair. But if you do have a desire, which that's the only the attributes of a God can have that desire. If that desire is in you, God is obligated to fulfill that desire. Then he said, if you are the attributes of a God, he said, and if you are, and you were in God thinking at the beginning, and see, and what is a reflection here on earth, you'll, you will bear record of the heavenly. And as he bore record of the heavenly also, and when he raised up from the grave and was given a body, we then, he said, when we raise up, we have a body like his own glorious body. The resurrection is sure. It's a, it's a guarantee. And we have the earnest of it now as the Holy Spirit comes in and identifies us as God's redeemed person. He said, amen. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you are sealed till the journey is over. Amen. That is your token that you hold. That shows that your fare has been paid. He said, you are redeemed the character. Satan has no business with you. None whatever. Just pick up your token and show him. Said, my healing is paid for. My trip to glory is paid for. Sometimes the word is just read in, the, in a normal way. But it's a powerful word. If we can grasp it. If we can take it to our heart. I think that that will solve this of many sort of our problems. And then the prophet said, take your token. He said, you are redeemed. And if Satan tries to push something on you, just show this. That is your identification. If you have the Holy Ghost, if you have the life of Christ that living in you, the devil has no businesses on you. You do have the identification. What you did, just show it is your life. Lord, I received the word. The word, I received it in my soul and in my heart. Amen. The devil has no business. He has nothing can trample you on. You belong not to him, but you belong to God himself. Amen. You know, when I was in China this time, uh, but I was with uh, Brother Ron, Brother Tom. Uh, one day, and Brother Glenn, and uh, Brother Ron, and we, uh, we want to, uh, in Beijing, just uh, wait for our Brother Tom to come and uh, to join us. And we decided to go to uh, the Tiananmen Square and just to take a, uh, take a little walk over there. But when we get there, and we find out that there was uh, so many securities, so many police, and uh, uh, the armed police, and even the army that's uh, in the Tiananmen Square there. We thought, what is going on? Then I realized, oh yeah, because they have the, the communist, uh, they have the party. Uh, 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 sorry, not party. They, had, uh, they have the conference. And uh, in the conference, they have to uh, re-elect uh, the, the, uh, the presidents. So there's a lot of uh, uh, police and everything uh, there. Everywhere you go, you have all the checkpoints. And we have to uh, give out our, take out our wallet, um, uh, show our passport, and to, to go through the checkpoint. But we, uh, I brought in my passport because I know I'm a Chinese. They don't believe me to be a Canadian. So I, I always bring my passport wherever I go. But uh, Brother Ron and Brother Glenn, they didn't bring his wisdom. So they just coming over at the checkpoint. They said, oh, I, I forgot my passport. What should I do? I said, well, oh, you know, what can I do? You know, you just, uh, I said, well, we just try. See if they let us, uh, let us go through. If they don't let us go through, we just go back to the hotel. So we went there, and uh, I, I take out my passport. I show to them, and they look at me. They look at my passport because I'm taking a Canadian passport. Uh, it seems like I'm a, it's a fake. They check uh, back and forth. Uh, you know, where this guy is? He's a Chinese. Why he got a Canadian passport? They look at it back and forth uh, several times. Uh, they let me go. But when it comes to Brother Ron, they look at him, just let him pass. I said, this is my own country. This is, uh, <laughs> this is a prejudice. Why did let him pass? I uh, just uh, check me back and forth. Then I realized, oh, he doesn't need a passport. He's American. He's uh, he looks like American. He's a uh, 
uh, sorry to say, he's a white. <laughs> <laughs> so his identification is literally his face. He doesn't need a passport. It was a man just to go through. They just let him go through. That uh, brother Glenn go through. I, I got a quite a uh, quite a sad about it, so, you know. But anyway, from that I started to realize, you know, for him, uh, it was so easy. He doesn't need to show his passport or wherever he go. They all know he's American. It, it doesn't mean anything, no. Okay. And they know that's a brother Glenn. He's a he's a Canadian. Or what a country? He's a white. That, that, they know they are the foreigners. So they don't need any identification. They realize, oh, he's coming from a foreign country. Of course, he won't be a terrorist and, you know, try to kill somebody and this and that. So they just let him to pass. And I find out that there's a one, we get on a bus one time. And I get to another checkpoint. And they ask everybody to show their ID. And I pull up on my ID. When they get on a, get beside the bus, and when they look up, they saw Brother Ron and uh, Brother Tom. They just let a bus pass. Because why? Because they know they're foreigners. They're not trying to do any damage. I'm thinking, don't they realize America have a drug dealer too? <laughs> but they just let them go. They just, because they thought, oh, they're foreigners. You know, they won't do any harm. They just, just let them pass. Then I got a revelation. <laughs> <laughs> if you live your life, if you're coming from another country, if you are living life, you're so much, you're so baptized yourself in the word of a God. Your whole countenance shows. Your whole life shows. It is not that I belong to the church. I belong to that church. Your whole life from the inside out will show that you come from another country. You doesn't need to pull any tag. You know, I belong to this. I belong to that. Your life will show that who you are and where are you coming from. If we are the attributes of a God, that attribute will manifest himself. It's not the struggle. It's not trying to fight him. It's not trying to, you know, you try to do this. You try to do that. You just yield yourself to the dealing of God. Yield yourself. Give yourself to the word of a God. That word will manifest in itself. And you don't have to say, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. Devil will recognize that you are a Christian. When you pray for your children, when you pray for the sick people, they will recognize that who you are. It's not you try to bluff, you try to, you try to uh, bluff or something. Your life will show that. He will go in a way. When you pray, you lift up and say, I am the believer. I believe the word of God. Your life will automatically show that. But Abraham said, so you say, if he was in God's thoughts, if you were in God's thoughts, when he come to the world, he's come in God's thoughts at the beginning to display his attribute. He said, then Jesus came to break the clouds back so that attribute could display itself. If you are in God's thoughts, whose job to do Put those attributes on display. It's not you try to do it, but it's the attributes himself. Because if you are the attributes of a God, then you are God. You possess the nature of a God. You possess every element that is in God himself in a smaller portion. But even the weakest of the believer, weakest Christian, they still put the devil on their feet. It's the attribute with display itself. He said he came as a redeemer. And to redeem anything is to bring back. He said to bring it back. It was a God thought that was you. He said Zoe, that is a God's own life. The life that's in you never did begin. That is, if you've got eternal life. And that's God for you was in the thought from the eternal. And now is expressed here in the human being for his glory. Your temptation will have, a end, will have a beginning and will have an end. Your trial will have a beginning and have an end. But you have no beginning. That, that's why you have no end. Amen. 
He said that the word eternal never did it begin, and neither can it end. And you are an attribute of a God thinking before the world was ever created. That's the only way you can have eternal life. And that life that he was thinking of you is in you now. There is no way to separate it. It is in there to stay. If God put attributes in there, if you belong to him, if you are the son and daughter of a God, which by believing the word to prove that you are the son and daughter of a God, how can he leave you? How can he let you go without taking care of you? How can he let Satan continually put his feet on you and try to bluff you and try to tempt you? How can he let that go forever? He will never leave it that way. There is only one form of eternal life. If you've got eternal life, then you yourself was in God's thinking before the world was created. You are the attribute of the thinking because eternal never did begin or never can end. Can we let us focus on the things that is eternal instead of things that are temporary? You know what is eternal? You are eternal because you are from the thoughts of God. That means that you are eternal. That is the full of the things has eternal value. The temptation, the trials, the difficulties, the confusion, the things that we went through, they don't have nothing eternal value. The only eternal value is because you are the son and daughter of God. You are from the source of God. That has eternal value. You are part of God's economy. Always. It's just reflecting. It's becoming now. They got one more picture to develop. That's death. Then the negative become positive. Then you are in the bride and with Christ as he thought. Like husband and wife today. So Christ and the church will be the same. Even death cannot do any harm on you. Death only do one thing. To develop that negative. Then into the positive. Death is only ever one thing to do, just to bring you to the presence of God. And in identification, in an identified Christ of all age, Brother Bram said, and a redeem means to bring it back to where it started from. Where God will bring you back to? He brings you back to his thoughts. That is where you started. You know, that is why that we cannot fall. Because in the Christ of the mystery of God, he said he predestinated a bride that was not going to fall. The, eve, the first eve was fall, but the second eve will not fall. Why? It's not because of our ability, but he predestinated us. He put that attribute, he put that seed, he put that thoughts, even before the foundation of the world, he put it in you. That's the reason you cannot fall. He said, right, you were in God thinking. He might have to breed this with that. Head down here and the down here. He said, like a man making a chimes for the church. He said, it puts in so much brass and so much iron and gets it just at the right pitch. He said, a motor knows how to put it in. If it doesn't, he doesn't get the right terrain. The only thing that we're going through, what we're going through is for God to that, that attribute to be manifested. As I said, whose duty to manifest that attribute? Just give me a few minutes. I'm going to try to wrap it up here. It's not your duty. It's not you try to manifest it. We as a human being, we cannot do that. But as a responsibility is laid in that attribute. It's in that gene that he laid in you. And so when you possess that, if you yield yourself to it, then he will manifest it itself. And the Bible said that in the identity of the Christ of old age, he said that God knows just exactly where you belong and what age you belong in. And therefore, if you got eternal life, the word eternal is something never did begin nor or never can end. He said that you were God's attributes being displayed. A word. 
He said, in the beginning was the word, and the word is a thought made and manifested. He said, you think it, then speak it. Like I had to say the light, I had to think light before I said light. Microphone. Think microphone to see a microphone. And we are God's attributes to display. You know all this word was speaking about you? You know that the prophet is spending much more time to speak it about that you are the son and daughter of God. He talking about a, you are the attributes of God. What he tried to do. Because that's the thing we need to focus on. That is the God's eyesight. He saw God. That's why he put this message here. So that we put on a God's eye vision. So that when we look at ourselves, we don't look at just a human flesh. But we look at and see that attributes of God. That gene of God living in me. When I keep focus on that, I won't be disturbed by the world. I won't be attracted by what is the devil trying to say. But I'll be, I'll be focused on what is the God say to me. He said, if you are a son of God, if I am a son of God or a daughter of God, we were in God at the beginning. And when Jesus became the fullness of the word, then we were in him, germ form. When he was crucified, we was crucified in his body. When he arose from the dead, we rose with him. And now, since we have recognized it, he said, and now we sit together with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. When we sit in heavenly places with Jesus, when we recognize that, he died for me, so I already died. He arose for me, then I rose with him. Amen. By recognizing that, now you, you are sitting in the heavenly place with Jesus Christ. Amen. It's not an emotion. It's not something that we saw. It's not something that we feel. He didn't ask you if you feel that or not. Many times we don't feel we're sitting in the heavenly place. Many times we feel that we're sitting in hell. Many times we feel that we're sitting in trouble. But by recognizing he already done that. I'm an attribute of a God. I'm a son of a God. I'm a daughter of a God. Everything is finished. Amen. Then I'm sitting in heavenly place with Jesus Christ. We are sons and daughters of a God. We are God's children. Then we are attributes of a God. Then we got eternal life. Jesus, all that word. Then we were a part of him then. You are the part of the word. If the heaven and the earth will pass away, but he said, my word will never pass away. If the word will never pass away, how can you pass away? How can you perish? Then how can your children perish? How can your loved one perish? Why God want to manifest the attribute? For God too, He doesn't intend it for the attribute just to stay in the attribute. He doesn't intend that you just stayed in the gene form, in the germ form. I never want my son just to be an unknowable, invisible son that in my, in my loin. You don't want your children to be forever invisible that are just in your loin. You want them to be manifested. You want them to come out so that you can fellowship. God has an attribute, but he cannot just fellowship with his attribute. He cannot just end his thoughts and let him stay in the thought form. He must let him to be on display, to manifest himself. Why was the reason? So that he can fellowship with them. But how to fellowship? He said that God put his sons in the Satan's Eden. He said that God put his sons here. His attributes to fellowship with him by hearing his word. You want to know how to fellowship with God? Hearing his word. That is the fellowship with God. It's not that the denomination that taught at us, you know, you have to pray morning and day and night to try to talk, talk, talk. Is hearing his word. That is the fellowship with God. 
How? To fellowship with him by hearing the word. When you're listening to the word, you're literally fellowshipping with God. When you're reading the word, you're literally fellowship with him. When you're obeying the word, you're literally fellowship with him. Then he said, what if your father told you, and you are a loyal son to your father, and he told you, son, don't you go in that water out there swimming, because there's a gator in that water. And a fellow comes back and says, surely, such pretty water as that, there's no gator in it. Now, who you are going to listen to? If you're a genuine son, if, uh, sorry, if you're a genu- genuine son, or I'll say, if you're a genuine attribute, you will listen to your daddy. Amen. And a genuine son and daughter of God takes God's word first. I don't care what anybody else says about it. They take God's word first. There is a poison in the cup, and they believe it. Having faith in all his word, his seeds brought out of Eden of holiness, love, and eternal life. God wants his attribute to be manifested. And how to that is a word attributed to be manifest? The reason is he wants to have a fellowship with his attribute. God like every stage of our life. No matter what stage that you are in. When I was a little baby, what, let's take my children. Let's take your children as example. Do you love your children? Which part are that you don't love? I'm not talking about a physical part. Which stage of your children that you don't love? When they're a little baby, oh, they're so cute. When they grow a little bit, oh, they're so lovely. When they become a teenager, oh, they're so ugly. <laughs> no. I love my children every stage of them. Even your children rebel, that's the most precious time that you ever have your children. That's the time to drive you deeper with the Lord. That's the time you start thinking more. You want to create a more atmosphere around him. Why you want a fellowship? When the fellowship the things that is wrong, is like a dagger put in your heart. But you try to find a subject, you want to fellowship in the right thing. But you don't want to force it. You sharpen your mind. You sharpen everything that in your thoughts. That is the precious time you can ever have. God loved every stage of our life. When I was in the streets of church, God loved me. No different than they loved me in the messy church. When I went to the house church, God loved me. No different than they loved me now. He loved me every stage of my life. When I was a sinner, he loved me. He cannot increase his love. Why? Because I am an attribute of God. Your children is attributes of you. Which part, which stage that they are not lovable? Every stage they are lovable. They might be a nuisance for other people, but they are a lovable person to you as a father, as a mother. Why? Because they are your attributes. And then if a spiritual speaking, if we are the attributes of a God, every stage that we went through, God love us. When you're doing good, God love you. When you don't do good, God still love you. Why? Because you are the attributes of him. All purpose, God only have one purpose. I want this attribute to be manifested. I want this attribute to be mature. Why? Because I want fellowship. I can't fellowship with a baby. No matter how cute they are. I can't fellowship with them when two years old. Baba, go, go, da, 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 da. I can't fellowship. That's not my language. I can't fellowship with them when they're five. There's many things that in me. I want to tell them I couldn't fellowship with them. I can't fellowship when they're just a little children. Just go to here, go to there, play, play. I can play soccer with them. I can play ball with them. That's good. But there's more that's in me that I want to fellowship. God have you as an attribute. It's not for you to stay as an attribute. It's not for you to stay immature. It's not for you to stay just like a baby. He created you to fellowship with you. 
the only way for him to have fellowship with you, he has to let you go through what you're going through. Then you're hearing the word. He have to let you go through the trials. Then you start to hear in the word. He have to let you make your decision. Sometimes you make a wrong decision. And then you come back. You humble yourself back. Like your son come back to the father. Said, Father, I have done it wrong. He said, Thou, now I can fellowship with you. There's some more enriched fellowship that's in there. He doesn't want an attribute. Just to stay as an attribute. He doesn't want a germ. Just stay as a germ. He want that germ to grow. Because that fellowship has to increase. Has to elevate it to a different level. I, I, I love my children. Just like everybody else, you love your children. I want to have a fellowship with them. I have a better fellowship with them than I ever have a fellowship with them. It's not just the word, just they try, they try to tell you, oh, I love you, daddy, I love you, mommy, I love you, this and that. They have a thought. They can elaborate their thought. They can talk about their trials. They can talk about the difficulties. They can talk about the things that they go through. When this time a one-hour BCA students is one there, before they go, I had a meeting with the brother, Brother uh, Kim, and also I talked with the children. I said, I'd appreciate you all going there to be a light, to be a witness, to shine your lights before them. Do you have a few minutes? Just give a few minutes. I'll, I'll wrap it up real quick. I said, you, uh, I appreciate it. That, that's great. I said, but that's not your whole purpose there. I said, your whole purpose there is for yourself. The greatest testimony it's not a how eloquent you can say to them. The greatest testimony you can ever give a person is when they saw God change your whole life. Amen. When they saw that you'd be so from a cold log, you become a fervent believer. You don't need to say anything. That is the life identification. You don't need to, like me, have to hold a passport to them because my face is a Chinese face. They're in and out. They're Americans. They're in and out. They're... They're, 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 they're coming from this country. They don't need a passport. They know they're where they're coming from. The language exposed them. The faith exposed them. Everything exposed them. And they are from America. You are from the heavenly realm. You don't need to tell them, I'm coming from here. I'm coming from there. I do this. I do that. I'm a Christian and this. I'm a Christian and that. Your life will show it. You don't need to blow the trumpet and tell everybody, I'm coming. When you come, they will know you're coming. When your life changed, that is the greatest impact you can ever to give it to a person. Amen. So I told her to be say students, I said, when you go there, don't think about it. You do a great things. You don't have to do anything great. You just go there. Listen to the service. God wants a fellowship. Hear in the word. When you hear in the word, let the word change your life. When your life was transformed, that is the greatest testimony you can ever to give it to those Chinese people. Amen. That's what you can do here too. I said, I want a fellowship. And I want to have the fellowship. If I want to have the fellowship with my children, how much the fellowship our Lord want to have it with you? You are the attribute. You are the gene of God. You are the germ of God. How eagerly, yearning that he wants to have a fellowship with you. Could that be? Could that be? That's what it is. That you're going through what you're going through? Could that be? That's why that you're going through the difficulties. You're going through the, the trials that you're going through. Could that be? It's the Lord that said, I want to have a fellowship with you. I can't have a, that fellowship when everything's good. And you're, you're dancing in the spirit. Everything's fine. You know, I'm doing great. My family's doing good. But all of a sudden, the destruction almost seemed like it's striking down. It's not trying to destroy you. But God said, I want to have a fellowship with you. Fellowship by what? By hearing the word. Because your ear be too busy with other things. Your eyes be watching other things too busy. You don't have the time to hear what I try to say to you. But when that time start come, could that be that the Lord have some fellowship with you? 
Does that be that you have to be in keep yourself in the attribute condition too long? The Lord said, now is the time. I need some uh, higher quality fellowship. It's not you crying day and night to me. I don't need to you crying day and night to me, the Lord said. I don't need you to come just to come over here, just a boo-hoo and a woo-hoo and everything. I want you to hear my word. Amen. I want to have some fellowship with you. He want to have a more fellowship with you than what you think you want to have. When I was in China, I would look at all the people coming through the prayer line. And one after another, one after another, I didn't see one of our students come. My heart was, uh, I was just bleeding. I said, where is our children? Where is our BC students? Where's Dan? Where's Josh? Where are they? But I, I don't know. Because they're, they're supposed to be the last one to come in. But in my heart, I'm yearning. I said, where are they? I want to... This is the great chance they're coming through the prayer line that the question can be answered, that the problem can be solved. They can, uh, they can pour themselves before the Lord. Where are they? I didn't see them. And I was still praying. I was still praying. You don't know how, what are the battle that I went through. I think Brother Tom will probably share it with you. They, uh, and that after the end of the prayer line, I have to be, uh, they have to be packed me back to the, uh, to the room. I couldn't even walk. It was not because of just the prayer, just the mind battling. And then afterward, I saw Dan started coming and all the others. Amy started coming, Josh, and different started coming. Oh, I said, oh, wonderful. I said, Lord, I believe you're going to do something special for them. Then I was thinking, where's my son? And I said, Lord, where's my son? Lord, I know you're a God. But Lord, I just want to know you care about me too. Right. Now later on, I asked Brother Tom. And Brother Tom said, I said the same thing. Where's my granddaughter? And I was praying. I was praying for others. And in, another, in my mind, I was thinking, where's my son? Don't miss this chance. Where's my son? Don't miss this chance. And then afterward, I saw him coming up and uh, my heart was so joy and he had coming over sorry Abraham to put you on the spot and then he had coming up to the platform he said to brother Ron he said to brother Ron I only want one thing I want the Lord to totally consume me and that's all father and mother's desire I don't need a big money. I don't need a big job or this and that. I just want to God totally consume all our children. All our young people. Let the Lord consume them. Consume them. No reserve. No nothing reserved back. Give your whole self to the Lord. And then afterward... And on to another city. And one of the meetings was going on. I was just praying. And I said, and after the whole, uh, uh, the meetings was over, I just feel it in my heart. I said, I think I want to talk to my son. So I just want some fellowship, if I can put it in that way. I miss him. So I texted to the brother. I said, Brother Caleb, I said, I want to. I want to have some fellowship with my son. Can I? And I texted him. And he texted me back. He said, you don't need to. He said, he's on his way to our room. He want to have a fellowship with you. Amen. Can God have this type of a fellowship with us? How we yearning. You are his son. And when he come... We're talking about the Lord. We talk about the meeting. We talk about how God has been working. How God has been doing this person's life in that person's life. I have the best of fellowship I ever had. Who said the teenagers can only be rebellious? Parents, you can have the best of fellowship you can ever to have with them. No matter what situation they're in. No matter what condition they're at. That's the best time you can ever 
have your children. Can God want to have, does God want to have a fellowship with us? Does God want to have a fellowship elevated to at a totally different level? I'm sure he's yearning for that, to have that type of a fellowship with you. That you want a fellowship with him, that he want a fellowship with you. By what? By hearing the word. When you're hearing the word, when you're obeying the word, when you do what is the word said, you literally have a fellowship with God. May the musician come. God love every stage that in your life. No matter how good you are or how you feel, I'm not good at all. I'm doing really bad. But his love to you never changed. But that love just means so much more in our trials, in our difficulty. That then in our good time. That love just means so much more when we're going through things. We don't know what to do. And then that same love of God, but just intensified when we went through some things that was so dark to us. Brother Brahma said that in the power of transformation, he said, You was in your father as a germ, and you come forth as a daughter. Every one of you, brother and sister, you come forth. If you wasn't in your father, he said, then you wouldn't have been there. You, have, you wouldn't have been here. If you believe in the message of the Bible and the present message of this day, a vindication of it, the reason you are sitting here because you were predestinated to sit here. You wouldn't have been here otherwise. You would have been on the street. Maybe drunk, some of you. And some of you out here and running around with some other man's wife. And you woman out married and running around with some other woman's husband. Or something like that. See, but you were predestinated to be here. See, you can't help it. You have a father. He is a God. And you were a seed. There's nothing can be more clear than this. You received the message of this hour. You received the message, the present message of this day. A vindicated of it. Why? Because God predestinated you to hear this. Why? Because by hearing the word, you have a fellowship with him. And now we truly have the fellowship with the beloved the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not imagination. It's not some reasoning. It's not somebody said this to us, talking to us. But this is a reality. We are fellowshipping with him by hearing the word, by obeying what he said. Shall we stand? As an attributes of a God. I believe God wants our fellowship with him to elevate it to another level, to a higher level. You know what? When you're going higher in the fellowship with him, one day, one day, when the body changed, and it just need another higher level, then we will be eternally that a fellowship with our beloved Lord Jesus Christ. While we're still on this earth, can we have a more fellowship with Him? By hearing the word, by talking to Him, by Him talking to us, listening to what He said, by obeying what He said, just as the Son to a Father. 
God loves every stage that we're in. No matter what stage you're in, no matter how you think you're in the, in the bad shape, but God loves that. But He just wants our fellowship to be another level with Him. May the Lord bless you. Can we sing a song? I shall lift my eyes up to, Cal uh, to Calvary. I, I shall... Yes. Let's sing the verse 1.
amazing grace that the Lord gave it to us. He didn't say our fault. He said what? The attributes that is in us. You're the son and daughter of God. It's not the Bible, Brother Murphy said, but that is the word of God has said. How he loved to have a fellowship with his own children. If a man, if a father and a mother want to have a fellowship with their children, how much more, our oh dear Lord, want to have a fellowship with you? Shall we have a prayer? Oh dear Heavenly Father, Lord, that is this quiet, sacred moment. Lord, I want to see, Lord, I want to have a fellowship with you, Lord. Lord, just let a fellowship become sweeter than ever. Lord, let the presence of a God become closer than ever. Lord, when we're listening to the word, Lord, when you speak to our heart, when we come for service, when we're going home, when we're in the car, when we're out to the room, put a earplug on, when we start to pick up a book and start to read, Lord, that's the sweet time of a fellowship, Lord. Lord, if you let us run through many things. Lord, sometimes the things that we don't know even we can run through or not. But Lord, all the things that we're going through, or all the things that we went through, it is only for one purpose. It's in those precious times you draw closer, Lord, that you want to have a fellowship with your children because we are your attributes, Lord. So, Father, I commit as a congregation into your hands. Lord, as we, each one, they go back to their home. Lord, may their experience with God just be refreshed from tonight on. Lord, may their walk be with you just be refreshed again, Lord. May they rededicate their, every one of their life. Lord, it doesn't take a years to do that. It doesn't take a, a penetration. It doesn't take a long fasting. But it's just in a moment of a time. The transforming of our mind, our heart, that we can come before the Lord and say, Lord, I just want to have a more time with you. Lord, it just totally consume me, Lord. That's all my heart to desire. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for speaking to us this morning. We thank you for that you're speaking to us in a, such a, not a personal way. Lord, we know you care, Lord. Or sometime that we might be even asked the question, does God really care? Lord, by the action you do show to us, you said, I do care. We have a, such a careful God who cared all the need of his own children. Lord, we give you thanks. We bless your holy name, Lord. You are worthy of all the praise, all the worship. Only your children know how to worship you from the bottom of our heart. Father, we thank you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Just before we go, can we sing a song of the original life? Yes. The original.
I don't care if you believe it or not, I believe it. And we're going to act upon it. If we're the son and daughter of God, let us act like the son and daughter of God. We're not the devil's children. We're not the belongs to this world. This world has nothing in me. Even Jesus, before he go to the, before to go to the Christ, he said, Satan has nothing in me. And we can say the same thing. The world has nothing in me. We don't even belong to this world. Hallelujah. Praise our God. Let us act upon what is the word has said. Go back home and live like a children of God. And live before your children like your children of God. So that when they saw that, Daddy, why are you so happy? Why are you so living always a victory? That you can tell them it's the attributes in me. And son and daughter, you are my attributes. The devil cannot get a hold of you. You have no business in you whatsoever. Just that he has nothing in Jesus, has nothing in me, in you, in our family. And that's what we believe. And Lord willing, there's a brother Stephen Dodd going to uh, preach to us on Monday. And we're going to have a uh, fresh air coming from uh, Grand Prairie. <laughs> and we appreciate it, Brother Stephen. All the Dodds family, we appreciate that. And so we just uh, uh, remember our brother in prayer. And uh, we believe it, if the Lord willing, we're going to have a wonderful time together in the Word of again, to have a fellowship with Him again. May the Lord bless you. Shake hands with each other. And uh, if Lord Terry, we'll see you on Wednesday.